An average man discovers a way to be anyone, only to find that walking in someone else's shoes might bring more danger than he can handle. At a cobbler's shop, a group of men discuss how Gurgerman is driving them out of business by raising rent prices and threatening their families. Because of this, they seek the help of the cobbler, Pinkas. However, the man notes that Gurgerman isn't his customer, so he can't do anything about it. This prompts one of the men to reveal that they've stolen the greedy man's boots. With this, Pinkas uses a peculiar stitching machine on the shoes. While he's working, his son, Herschel, approaches and asks about the machine. Pinkas shares that it was gifted to his father by an angel, so it must only be used on special occasions. He recounts how long ago, during winter, a vagrant came to their cobbler shop, so his father sheltered him, fed him, and mended his shoes. The following morning, the beggar was gone but left the stitching machine behind. Decades later, Pinkas' great-grandson, Max, opens the cobbler shop he inherited. While taking a break, he sees the gorgeous Taryn exiting the apartment nearby, leaving him stunned. However, her boyfriend, Emiliano, joins the woman. Seeing him looking at them, Jimmy, the owner of the barbershop next door, wonders if there's any romance in Max's life. When the man says no, Jimmy comments that he's better than Emiliano, though the cobbler argues that the younger man is rich, given that he has his own driver. He then shares that he should figure out what he wants to do, but Jimmy thinks he's meant to be a cobbler since his family has been one for generations. Uninterested in discussing this further, Max retreats into his shop. Later, Carmen approaches Max to discuss her organization's duty to preserve the Lower East Side. Her group wants to prevent real estate developers from forcing middle-class residents out to build luxury areas. They do this by buying the current tenants out or raising their rent. Hearing this, Max wonders how much he'll get for selling the shop. Carmen, however, insists that people like him should stay, but he argues that he doesn't want to. To convince him, Carmen takes him outside and shows him how his shop is part of the city, asserting that their land isn't just a playground for the rich. With that, she asks him to sign her petition and invites him to a rally tonight to support Mr. Solomon, an elderly man who's being evicted from his home. She gives him a flyer about the protest before leaving. That evening, however, Max heads home to his ailing mother, Sarah, instead of attending the rally. The following day, a thug named Leon has Max clean a shoe while boasting that his watch collection is worth more than the establishment. He then drops off another pair of shoes, ordering the man to fix them by tonight. Max argues that they close at 6, but Leon insists on getting his shoes later. While working on it, however, Max's stitching machine breaks, so the cobbler heads to the basement to find a spare machine. Instead, he finds Pinkas' machine. As he works on the shoe, Jimmy checks on him again. Seeing the cluttered basement, he recalls advising Max's father to get rid of the junk there, but he couldn't throw things away. Bitterly, Max adds that his father threw his family away instead. Late that night, Max waits for Leon to pick up his shoes. Out of boredom, he tries on his customer's shoes and, to his surprise, he sees that he's turned into the thug. Panicked, he quickly removes the shoes, confused as to what happened. Max closes the shop to avoid any witnesses before trying the shoes on again and transforming into Leon. He then collects another pair of shoes to see if it'll happen again, but it doesn't. Confused, he compares the shoes and realizes that the stitcher is the cause of his transformation. He tests this out by using the machine on other shoes and confirms it when he transforms into his customers. Max gleefully experiments on this until he turns into a corpse since the shoe's owner passed away. The following morning, Max feels more excited about going to work. Later, a strange man visits Jimmy's shop but only lingers without asking for a haircut. The man then heads straight into the cobbler's shop and removes the shoes, turning back into Max. This experiment confirms that he can fool anyone with his disguises. As the day passes, more customers drop off their shoes for repairs. Max uses one man's shoes to walk into Chinatown in disguise and realizes that he can also mimic the person's voice and accent. Next, he dines at a restaurant as someone else, then reverts to his normal appearance in the bathroom to avoid paying. While walking, he notices a rich man taking his luxury car into valet parking. With an idea in mind, Max transforms into Leon and robs the rich man's shoes. This allows him to borrow the man's car and happily cruise the highway in it. After the fun-filled day, Max returns to his mother, sharing that he had the best day. He then wonders if she ever wishes she could be someone else, but Sarah says no since she's happy to be his mother. Instead, her only wish is to see his father again. With this in mind, Max takes his father's old shoes to the shop the next day. Before he can work on it, however, Taryn drops off her boyfriend's shoes. This changes Max's plan for the night as he pretends to be Emiliano instead. He goes to a club where he catches the attention of the ladies. Soon, a woman takes an interest in him and the two get into a cab to head to his home for some privacy. However, when Max admits that he lives with his mother, she dumps him. The man then heads back to the shop but runs into Emiliano. Thankfully, he removes one shoe in time, preventing the man from seeing his duplicate. As Emiliano leaves his apartment, Max comes up with another idea. 
Disguised as Emiliano again, he goes to his apartment and finds Taryn in the shower. She invites him in and he's stunned by the woman's beauty. When the woman urges him to join her, Max hurriedly undresses but realizes that he'll transform back if he removes his shoes. With that, he hurries away. At home, he finds Sarah watching the news where Carmen talks about their protest. As she speaks about the families living there, Max admires her passion. The following day, Max bumps into Carmen as she takes groceries to an elderly resident. She takes this chance to ask if he can get his father to sign their petition, but he admits that his dad left years ago. Sympathizing with him, Carmen reveals that hers left too, but she just focuses on moving on. Before leaving, she encourages Max to visit her committee's office and get involved in protecting their community. Drawn to the woman, Max uses his magic shoes to watch her. However, he can't bring himself to speak to her. That night, Max musters up his courage before putting on his father's shoes, transforming into Abraham. After confirming that it works, he prepares a lovely dinner for his mother and encourages her to dress up. Soon, he returns home as Abraham, bringing joy to Sarah's eyes as she embraces her husband. The two enjoy dinner and dance together as Max fulfills his mother's wish. Afterward, he tucks his mother to bed and says goodbye to his father before removing the shoes. The following morning, Max checks on his mother but finds that Sarah has died in her sleep. Days after, Jimmy approaches Max during Sarah's wake. He assures him that his mother would have appreciated what he did for her. But Max is angry that he was the only one she had, and he can't even afford to get her a nice headstone. Jimmy offers to chip in for it, but Max questions why he would when he doesn't owe him anything. The barber then promises that it'll be better soon, so he shouldn't do things he might regret. Max, however, thinks it's too late for that advice and leaves. When the shop reopens, Leon finally returns to pick up his shoes. He complains that the shop has been closed all week, so Max passively mentions that his mother passed away. The customer makes shallow remarks about this before demanding for his shoes. However, he doesn't have the claim ticket, so Leon threatens Max to return his shoes by tomorrow. Angered, Max follows Leon around in disguise and witnesses the thug's awful acts. He uses several disguises to study him and takes interest when the thug enters a black vehicle. With the man gone, Max disguises himself as Leon and goes into his apartment, finding that the man's girlfriend, Macy, is leaving him for hitting her. Once she's away, Max searches for Leon's watch collection but discovers his stash of firearms instead. He then accidentally stuns himself with a stun gun, which knocks him out. Once he awakens, he hurries away, only to find Leon at the doorstep. The thug immediately chokes his duplicate, but Max still has the stun gun and uses it on him, making him collapse. When Leon awakens, he finds himself bound and facing Max, who's disguised as a young man. He demands to have his collection, and when the man refuses, he disguises himself in another form that scares Leon. Because of this, the thug gives him the watch's location. Before Max can leave, however, Leon's associates arrive, and the thug explains that they're about to pick up a large sum of money for a job. Blinded by greed, Max pretends to be Leon and joins the man's associates. However, the thugs take him to a warehouse first, where Leon's gang beats up Patrick, a man who stole from them. Freaked out, Max stops them from killing the man and excuses himself to the bathroom. Panicked, Max desperately comes up with a plan and soon returns, ordering Leon's gang to release Patrick, much to the man's surprise. The thugs then take him to the mansion of Elaine Greenewalt, who gives him money to get rid of tenants from the community. Shocked, Max returns to Leon's apartment, plotting to keep the money, then release the thug. However, Leon has escaped and beats him up, so Max desperately removes the stilettos he's wearing, effectively scaring the man as he transforms. Still, Leon tries to grab him and in the struggle, Max accidentally stabs him with a stiletto, killing him. Horrified, he flees without taking his things. The following day, the cobbler thinks over last night's events and ultimately decides to turn himself in. He takes the officers to Leon's place, but when they get there, the place is clean. Even the bag and money he left behind are missing. Thinking that he was imagining things, the officers leave. To his surprise, Max finds his bag in his shop, along with Leon's money and watches. Scared that something beyond his control is happening, Max heads out, intending to surrender the items. However, Jimmy stops him, commenting how the man has been acting mad since his mother died. He adds that Max's father was the same, which surprises the young man. Jimmy reveals that Abraham got into trouble and had to disappear to protect his family. Max berates his friend for not telling him sooner, so Jimmy defends that his father made him promise not to. Angered, Max pushes him off and leaves. In disguise, Max returns the money to Elaine, claiming that Leon sent him since he can't do the job for her. However, the woman is pissed since, without Leon's task, she'll lose more money. With that, she orders her thugs to knock him out. Max awakens in the backseat of a car as Elaine's thugs drive him out of town to make him disappear. As they do, the men discuss setting a place on fire tomorrow night. Thinking quickly, Max takes one of the shoes from his bag and disguises himself as the corpse. 
This leads the thugs to crash the car, thus releasing him. A group of kids discover the crash, but when Max steps out, they run, thinking that he's a zombie. Scared of the recent events, Max covers up the stitching machine the next day, deciding never to use it again. He then apologizes to Jimmy for yesterday. Later, Max accidentally spills the soda on the flyer Carmen gave him. Seeing it, he realizes that Elaine is trying to eliminate Mr. Solomon. He hurries to Carmen to warn her that the elderly man's apartment will be set on fire by Elaine's thugs. Hearing the name, Carmen recognizes Elaine as the owner of Mr. Solomon's apartment building, leading her to believe him. She takes him to the apartment building and explains that Mr. Solomon is the only tenant left. Once he's gone, Elaine plans to sell the entire block to make a fortune. Carmen introduces Max to Mr. Solomon and warns him about the threats to his life. Despite this, the man refuses to leave. He's been living in the building for 45 years and raised his family there, so he intends to pass away there. Refusing to let him be killed, Max suddenly asks for his shoe size. Soon, Max disguises himself as Mr. Solomon and meets with Elaine. He claims that he'll leave the place for $100,000 and a bus ticket to Chicago, where his daughter lives. Interested, Elaine offers to have her thugs escort him to Chicago to ensure his departure. The next evening, Elaine's thugs, Brian and Jeffrey, pick up Mr. Solomon, who orders them to leave their shoes outside before letting them in the apartment. When they exit, the thug's shoes are gone. Hours later, Jeffrey reports that Mr. Solomon is gone. Unbeknownst to them, Max has taken the men's shoes and disguises himself again. Max returns to Mr. Solomon's apartment as Leon. Jeffrey spots him and follows him inside, only to find Brian captured. The captive warns him about something behind him, so Jeffrey turns away, only for Max to use Leon's stun gun on him, having disguised himself as Brian. In the morning, Max disguises himself as Jeffrey and confirms that Elaine is on her way there to meet with her client. In reality, he has Jeffrey bound while Brian escorts the real Mr. Solomon to Chicago. When Elaine arrives, she finds Carmen exiting the building, claiming that she just visited Mr. Solomon there. Just as the woman leaves, Elaine's client arrives, so she hurries to get rid of the elderly tenant. During this, Brian escorts Mr. Solomon to the Chicago bus terminal, but the thug gets apprehended by the police while the elderly man leaves with a smile. Elaine hurries to the apartment and finds Max disguised as Mr. Solomon. He claims that her thugs lied about escorting him away, angering the woman further. When the man refuses to leave, Elaine threatens to have the building torched with him inside. She will then have his daughter assassinated in Chicago. To her surprise, a news reporter and cameraman appear from the living room, having recorded the woman's threats. Soon, Elaine is imprisoned while Carmen visits the cobbler to drop off her boots. She shares that Mr. Solomon wants to thank him for saving his home, then wonders how the man managed to trick Elaine. The man refuses to explain, so Carmen just invites him to dinner, which he gladly accepts. Eventually, Max visits Macy, disguised as a very pale Leon. He gives her the thugs' watches, telling her to sell them so she can have the life she deserves. When he leaves, some thugs corner him into a car where Patrick waits, wanting revenge on Leon and his gang. Before they can go, however, another vehicle collides with theirs. Max later wakes up in Jimmy's shop, where the man offers him pickles, noting that it helps them when they change. This surprises the man, who's confused as to how he knows about the transformations. Jimmy adds that he was the one who got rid of Leon's body and the evidence. He then takes off his shoes, revealing that he's actually Abraham. Stunned, Max embraces his father but quickly scolds him for not being there for him and his mother. The father argues that he had to disappear to keep them safe. Abraham then decides that his son is ready, so he takes him to the basement, where the man has hidden his collection of shoes that's been passed down through generations. The father notes that walking in another man's shoes is a big responsibility, but he thinks his son has learned that now. With that, he entrusts the collection to Max. Max then breaks down, apologizing for not taking care of his mother. Abraham assures him that he did well and embraces his son. Adding to the surprise, Abraham also reveals that he has a hidden luxury car with his own driver. He explains that he rebuilt the barbershop after he bought out Jimmy, who's actually in the Caribbean. As the father and son enjoy the drive home, Abraham adds that there are more tradesmen with skills like them, so he promises Max to show him everything and begins the tale of how the magical stitching machine ended up in their family. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.